Hello, this is Tommy. Welcome back to Chatomics. I have over 10 years experience of computational biology and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to organize a computational biology project. And in the end, I will show you how I typically organize a project using RStudio for a computational biology project. So make sure you stick to the end. So first of all, I encourage you to read this paper, A Quick Guide to Organizing Computational Biology Projects which was published in 2009. This is a very old paper, but the principles is still the same, applies to every computational biology project. So I highly recommend you to read it. So in this paper, it outlined uh, the typical uh, directory or folder structure for a computational biology project. Let's take a look. So for every project, it should have a name of, the, of that project. Okay, this is the uh, parent uh, folder. And for the subfolders, you should have multiple folders such as the data folder, and it contains all the raw data. And you should have a scripts folder such as the source folder, bin folder, which contains the scripts you use to process the data in the data folder. And you should have a results folder, which contains all the results that spit out by your scripts. And you should also have a documentation folder, which contains or the uh, documents. You don't have to follow exactly the same uh, structure like this, but as long as you have a consistent uh, full structure for all your projects, it will greatly help the reproducibility of uh, your projects. Okay, so now let's go to RStudio and let me show you how I typically organize a computational biology project. Okay, so if you go to RStudio and what you usually do, you use file and then go to new project. Okay, then you will ask whether you want to create a new project uh, from a new directory or existing directory. So if you already have a folder and it contains some data or scripts there, then you might want to use existing directory. In this case, I will create a new directory. So a project type, Whereas well, the new project are package or shiny application. So in this case, it's a new project. And then give a name for that directory or folder. So it will say dummy project. Just use a descriptive name for your project. And then it will ask to create the project as the subdirectory of, uh, so by default is the home directory. So in this case, I will uh, create that project in the uh, playground uh, sub, uh, uh, subdirectory here. So if I do this, open and create sub, uh, project. And now uh, it, our studio create this uh, R project file. Uh, also, you see the name is dummy underscore project. So if you go to your terminal, and go to the playground and take a look. Now you created this dummy project folder. So if you go inside and indeed it contains this dot R project file created by RStudio, which is this one. So now you can create those subfolders. For example, you can click this add folder data Right. Now you create a new folder, and you can create an, another folder called scripts. Right, and of course you can create using the RStudio GUI, and usually you can also create uh, using the command line. So if you look at the ls, look, look at the contents of that folder. Then now you, because you created those two folders just a minute ago, and now you can create a new folder called results. LS again, now you have three folders. And if you come to the RStudio, and you see you, now you have three folders here. Okay, now let's create some dummy data in the data folder. Okay, go to data, and let's create some example.bat file. Chromosome one, three, four, chromosome three, four, seven, so 10, 5, and 10. Okay, then Control X, yes. 
Now you create a new uh, dummy file, example.bad, so three columns, Chrome song, start and end. Okay? So you can use the cat command to look at the contents of that file, just three, three rows. Okay? okay, now that you have some data in the data folder, now you can start to write scripts. Okay, so for you, so you can use this plus sign here. Usually you can use R script or R markdown. I use R markdown most of the time, so I will uh, add a new R markdown file and uh, create the title, read the data, for example. I'll do that. Now it creates a new R markdown file, and mm, this one has some like uh, empty templates, so which most likely you don't need, so get rid of them. And you can start writing R markdown. So you say read data, and then you add the R chunk, R code chunk here. Say now you want to read the data. So library, so read R. And the other trick I always use is use the package called here. So here is the package that uh, kind of translate all the relative paths into an uh, absolute path. So I highly recommend actually you to uh, read a blog post uh, describing how you to how to use here and don't use set working directory like for example set working directory and I, many of the people actually use set working directory and this actually makes your analysis is not uh, reproducible. So I will demonstrate how we use here okay. So let's one the chunk, uh, the output in the chunk. Okay, remove the output. Okay, uh, actually before that, we need to save that uh, scripts in the uh, script folder. So we click the save to scripts and give a descriptive name for that scripts. And for naming the scripts, usually there are some tricks. So for example, you have multiple steps for a particular project. You can use zero one read data and then the next one will be zero two underscore like for example process data and if uh, you have uh, the other trick you can use you can prefix using the dates so for example 2024 uh, uh, hyphen zero five eight for example so let's save that and now if you go to the scripts folder and now you have that r markdown file zero one underscore read data Okay. okay, so if you use here, after you load the heater library, if you do here, it will tell you, okay, this is the, uh, the working directory that you were, uh, so it will, here we'll look for the R project file, dot R project file, and we will uh, consider where this project, uh, this file is as the working directory. So now let's read in that uh, folder, uh, data uh, example.bad in the data folder. So what you do here is say my bad, and then you say read TS is a TSV file. Then use here and data uh, the example.bad file. Okay. So let's see how it looks like. Uh, oh, so I need to load the library. Okay. So if you do this, and now you read in that bad file into R. So if you look at my bad, uh, oh, of course, uh, there's uh, the column name is false. You see here we are using the first line as the header, but we don't have the header, so we should specify the column name as false. And if you look at my bad, and this is a data frame of three columns, okay? Chromosome, start and end, okay? And this is the magic of here commands here. For example, if you take a look, it will tell you the full path of that file. Essentially, it's this is your project name, data folder, and within the data folder, you have this file. This makes your analysis really reproducible. For example, you can just copy this whole folder into a different computer. But if as long as you use the here command, 
to specify the path, it still works because in a different computer, maybe it's in a different folder called uh, projects, like you slash user, like some other people's name, then you have like projects, then this is the same, right? Uh, if you just copy the whole folder into a different computer. But this will still work because here we'll return the full path on that computer. Even the uh, absolute path actually is different, right? In my computer versus your computer, okay? So I highly recommend to you, uh, you to use uh, this uh, here library, okay? Now you can save that. And what you can do now, you can create, for example, a second R markdown file. So R markdown, and then you say, okay, process uh, data. And then if you do this, create a new R markdown file, but I will say re, uh, process data and plot, for example. So now you save that uh, into you know a new name zero two process data then save it. Now in the scripts uh, scripts folder, now you have two uh, R markdown files, and now you can write scripts to process that data. So what you can do you okay because for example you already actually read into R, my bad file here, so I can say my bad. And okay, let me actually output the in the console rather than the in the chunk here. So my bad. So if here, so what you can do, so you can, for example, load the dplyr package and say my bad then you can do some manipulation of that file for example uh, you want to add for example uh, f uh, three base base pairs at the end so essentially extend e every interval of uh, three base pair longer so you can do uh, mutate x3 equals to x3 plus three base pair, for example. If you do that, so you get a new data frame. Now you can actually, for example, write that TSV file into your uh, results folder. So what you can do here, so you still use the here function. Now, remember it starts after you use here function, it, the working directory starts from here. So then use results, and then you can say new, my new dot bad. Okay, so if you do that, now you save your results in this results folder. So this is an intermediate file. So the same thing if you can if you have plots then you also you do the save all the plots in the results folder as well right so in this case you always start with uh, the data the scripts read the data in the data folder and spits out all the results in the results folder and of course the you should always make a, a copy of your raw data and you save all your scripts, like Git version control, and save them in uh, GitHub repository. And as long as you have the data available and you have the results, I mean, you have the scripts available, you can always uh, read the data in the data folder and reproduce the results in the results folder. Okay? So I hope uh, this video uh, helps you uh, to better organize all your computational biology projects. And a similar idea applies to Python pro uh, projects using Python as well, right? You use uh, a consistent folder structure like this. So I hope this video is helpful for you and uh, I will see you next time and make sure you subscribe if you like this.